painting, Untitled I Am a Man, the reference to civil rights protest placard that was carried in Memphis, Tennessee in 1968 by striking African-American sanitation workers. It also carries this history in another way in that Martin Luther King went down to address the strikers in 1968 was assassinated and people also carried this sign, I am a man, at the Martin Luther King Memorial March. So the painting is freighted with all of this history. Gwen Ligon is one of the most important artists of my generation and um, he is very prolific producing paintings, prints, drawings, videos, curating neons. Glenn Ligon is often called a conceptual artist. I don't think Glenn Ligon is categorizable. Glenn Ligon uses the protocols and constraints of conceptual art, meaning he creates a number of uh, rules and limits to generate a painting, for example. In the early 1980s, Glenn Ligon was making abstract paintings, heavily influenced by Twombly and Johns. In the 80s work that I'm particularly interested in is a series of drawings where Glenn Ligon juxtaposed a drawing of a Brancusi with a rendering of a New Nile hair product. These are really interesting drawings from the mid-late 80s, maybe into the early 90s, the same time that he was making expressionist paintings using pinks and reds and actually handwriting selected texts from porn magazines, gay, gay porn magazines. In the early to mid 80s, Gwen Ligon was looking for a way to use text figuratively. And this is considered to be by many one of his achievements. Many of the paintings he's known for are large, can be up to 8 to 10 feet tall. Some of the most famous ones were done on doors, actual wooden doors. He'll treat the surface with white grayish ground that may have tinsel or a pigment mixed into that. So there's actually color underneath there. And then he will choose a text and make stencils and use oil stick to paint in the text. He'll use the same stencil, uh, and the stencil is proportioned to the width of the painting, but not all of the statement can fit directly onto the painting. So sometimes he'll leave a letter or two letters and just follow on the next line down. As he is using the oil stick to execute the statement. He uses the same stencil, which holds onto the oil and holds onto the oil stick. So the line and the letters become thicker and denser to the point where you see that the painting has a kind of weight. It starts out with a more or less clear line around the edges of the letters and then becomes almost a, a block of hue at the bottom. Many of his works are drawn from quotations that uh, come from James Baldwin, Jean Genet, Zora Neale Hurston, Sojourner Truth, uh, many, many sources. He arrived in 1988 at this very special painting, Untitled I Am a Man. It's a portrait orientation. So it is, as Darby English says, both an abstraction and a figurative painting that uses language toward the ends of figuration. Untitled I Am A Man is often referred to as the first selected text painting. It is not. It's also not a stenciled painting. This painting is painted the way a sign painter would paint a painting. And Glenn Ligon used two different paints with two different drying times. Uh, a, a sign painting enamel and a fine art oil paint and he didn't realize that the two different drying times would produce this web-like cracks and irregularities all over the surface, but he chose to retain that. So in painting Untitled I'm a Man 1988, Glenn was interested in making a painting, a material fact that we contemplate now that's freighted with all this history, but it's really a portal or a terminus for the viewer to engage with a physical object and contemplate its meaning now. Glenn was thinking about uh, figures like Bayard Rustin and James Baldwin when he painted 
Untitled I Am a Man. Bayard Weston and James Baldwin are both uh, well-known civil rights activists. Baldwin was certainly a well-known writer. They were both African-American and they were both gay, and they both experienced homophobia from every side. Uh, Bayard Rustin, unfortunately, is uh, not a very well-remembered figure, but he was central to the civil rights movement. He worked very closely with King. He was one of the main organizers of the 63 March on Washington. It wouldn't be until the 80s that uh, queer folks like me and activists uh, would look to the history to see, to, to kind of recover these figures who were um, very important in, in quite a number of different struggles who were then forgotten or taken out of the official history because of the shame around their sexuality. There was a specific demand placed on people who have been historically excluded from the art world. So women, people of color, queer people are often burdened with the demand or the curiosity of autobiographical content when other artists with privilege don't necessarily have to make work that comes from them or is tied to them. All of his work is freighted with a tremendous amount of history, yet everything is restated in the present as a material fact that we have to confront now. So I would argue, especially around Untitled I Am A Man, but other works as well, that Glenn is not a sign painter, He's not a text painter only. He's a figurative painter, but much more than that. He has genuinely figured out an ingenious way to make text paintings that are figurative paintings, that are historical paintings, um, referring to many different genres, while mobilizing history as a biographical form of content without referring to himself. If Glenn Ligon's work is about identity, it's about dismantling the ways that identities are constructed and that people are constrained by those constructions. Glenn Ligon's work makes me most aware of my existential now.